Hey villagers, it's Jade. Do you wish you could put those little munchkins in the bed and just walk away? Want to take the stress out of putting them to sleep? Well, first I'll tell you why you should have a bedtime routine, and then I'll tell you how to make your own. I'm Jade, and this is my village. We all know what it's like to have to be with a sleepy, overtired child. You just want to throw them in the trash. And some might think that child has some mental issues like ADD when in fact it could just be fatigue. So a sleeping routine will help that little angel get to sleep and wake up feeling happy and refreshed. Sounds so simple, but it's true. We want them to be able to put themselves to sleep. And that way, if they wake up in the night, they can put themselves back to sleep again and they won't need you. They like to be able to predict what's going to happen next. So they fall into a routine and feel relaxed instead of feeling stressed about going to sleep and going crazy. And no matter which sleep method you subscribe to, they all stress the importance of a bedtime routine. It just, it helps even grown-ups sleep better. Now, what to do, what to do? You have many things to choose from, but stick to those things that are relaxing and calming, like reading, a bath, putting on pajamas, hugging time, a song, a quiet activity. I often have to remind my husband that there is no dancing or wrestling or running or things that get them all excited during bedtime. No husband and no screens either. This is the time to wind down and relax for the day. Also, be sure to spend some of the time in the room where they will be doing the sleeping. It just helps them feel more comfortable with the place so it doesn't just become the prison where I go to sleep. And it can be a nice place to hang out too. That's what you want them to feel. A nice place to bond and build memories. And you want to do things in the same order every night. Don't read a book before the bath one day and then after the bath the next day. Consistency is key here. And the younger you start the routine, the better, of course. It's hard to change it once they've already developed their other habits. Once they're old enough to point, you can have them choose the book or choose the toothbrush, the PJs that they want, so they feel like they have some control over that whole sleeping situation. This is also your opportunity to create good hygiene habits for when they're a bit older. And of course, you wanna make sure they go to the bathroom or go to sleep with a dry diaper and brush their gums or their teeth. No food or milk after they brush. Their dentist will thank you. Down the road, this won't be an argument. It's just something that's simply done every night. I put a potty in the bathroom and have them sit on it before a bath, before they turn to, just to start developing the habit. I'm really into habits and routines. Saves everyone's sanity. I don't force them or even expect to find any pee pee in the potty, but I think it gives them a good positive association with using the potty when it does eventually happen, which is around two. Uh, yours, though, doesn't have to be anything like mine. Your bedroom routine can be whatever it makes you happy and makes the family feel good. But here's what we do. First, we eat dinner around the same time every night, clean the dinner mess, go upstairs to their bedroom to undress, pee pee first, and then get in the bathtub. I've been having them brush their teeth while in the bathtub, but sometimes we do it before. Now that one of them can brush on their own, I gotta figure that out. Bath time is a great time for fun conversations about your day or whatever makes the kids happy. And then we lotion up, put on our PJs. I keep the lights low and I keep our voices low as well. Next, they choose books to read. We check out 25 from the library each week. Then I sing the good night song, which is just the ABCs in slow motion. Always learning in this house. And for the baby, I put on the, the white noise. The oldest sleeps with this soft blanket that he loves. The baby has a blanket too, but he has these two special stuffed animals that he really likes to have in the bed too. They give them sort of calming, relaxing sensation as well. But nothing in the crib for little babies though, guys. 
and of course. For babies, it's great to quietly recap what they did that day in order to help build their vocabulary. Then I turn off the lights, say, sweet dreams, I love you, mwah, mwah, mwah. And at 8 p.m. I close the door, and that's it. I watch them fall asleep on the monitor sometimes. Nap time has basically the same routine, minus the bath. Occasionally, the baby will cry for a couple minutes before going to sleep, but I don't go back in the room because then he'll think every time he cries, someone will come in. When he was a much younger baby though, and actually got really upset, I would calm him but not pick him up. Otherwise, he'd think crying means he gets picked up. You see where I'm going with this? I prefer to reward good behavior. I should mention too that these little ones, they don't just outgrow bad sleeping habits. They can keep up with poor sleep even once they start school. So the sooner that sleep gets fixed, the better it is for everyone. A good bedtime routine is a huge part of sleeping well. So do your absolute best to stick to the routine, even if you're somewhere else, on a plane, in a hotel, in the car, you get out that book, stuffed animal, white noise, whatever you got. Now it's time to share this video with everyone in your village that puts that baby to sleep and share your own tips in the comments. Let me know if you have questions or struggles of your own. And show me some love by hitting that subscribe button and love one another. You can go ahead and watch my next video now.